All right. Um, this is my idea on how to do good presentations. There are many ways, there are many ideas on how to do good presentations. This is just mine. And let's begin. First, uh, talk together. I'll give you half a minute. What are some good features of a presentation you have seen? Please talk together. What are some good features of a presentation you have seen? Half a minute, go. So tell us one idea. Please tell us one idea. Smile. Yes, I like that one. Next. Eye contact. Eye contact. That's a good one. Next. To show picture class. Yeah, pictures. Next. Easy to understand. Yep, yeah, make it easy to understand. Thank you. And there's many more. So those and more. We'll talk about them today. But first, there's a problem. Um, with presentations. Do you understand the idea of death by chocolate? Okay. Do you like chocolate? Yes. Do you love chocolate? Yes. Do you really love chocolate? Yes. <laughs> so, for some people, they love chocolate so much that they just want to eat and eat and eat and eat, and eat, oh, it's so good, and eat, and eat, and eat, and so good, and eat until they die. It means, <laughs> don't worry, I won't die. It means too much of a good thing is bad. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, and PowerPoint can be good, but we've done too much of it in probably a bad way. And uh, so let me give you more information. Um, death by PowerPoint means the excruciating pain and misery the audience suffers from it. And there's too much text and it's too cluttered. The presenter bases their presentation on the PowerPoint. Uh, presenters often read the slide um, and presenters reading is often slower than yours and reading slides full of text is <gasps> boring and usually the presenter stands in front so you can't see and why present when you can just email this if it's only text just why not email it do you understand? So, and also this is ugly too. The style is just horrible. Um, also, this is from a famous um, co uh, comic called Gilbert. It's about life in an office. And I'll give you a moment to read. So, this is Wally. He has seen so many presentations, and they're so bad, he just hates them so much. He says to her, please kill me, just kill me, please, I hate it so much. Do you understand? Okay. And uh, next is, this is more about death by PowerPoint. It is a big issue, really. And this is from the Brain Rules book. It's a kind of book about psychology for businesses. Okay, so um, my idea, uh, a lot of my ideas come from Gar Reynolds. He is now based in Osaka. Previously, he worked with Apple in California, and he started to learn about presentations from Apple, and he developed more ideas, and uh, he uh, has written books and has DVDs on how to do good presentations. And one of his main ideas, well, these are some of his main ideas, including storytelling, 
uh, using videos, uh, realia. Do you know realia? If you're talking about cups, bring a cup to show. If you're talking about uh, wombats, bring a wombat. If you're talking about phones, well, of course. Um, and use pictures, of course. And uh, use graphs. And make it interesting. And uh, I'd like to show examples of some things. And uh, these are two examples of introductions. And these are two examples on how to present numbers. Presenting numbers is kind of boring. Bless you. Um, and so these are some interesting ways to present numbers. But let's look at introductions. Do you know Steve Barmer? He is currently the CEO of Microsoft. Before, he, uh, before Bill Gates was the CEO of Microsoft, and he's retired, now Steve Barmer is the CEO. And I'll show you how he introduces his presentation. And this is a very important presentation. It's to many, many of a very large audience. I think the presentation is to his company, his own employees. It's a very important presentation. And he does not want them to fall asleep. So can you talk together? I'll give you half a minute. How can you start a presentation so that people won't fall asleep from being bored? Talk together, go. Okay. So let's have a look. Um, and so that's one way to start an introduction. Um, you don't have to, well, like that. Um, there's many other ways to do an introduction and uh, actually I like her style of introduction. It starts with a story and it seems really interesting. She uses keywords that get people's attention. At this time, um, at this time, uh, the H1N1 virus was a major problem around the world and a lot of people were scared. And so she used some virus disease related words to start her presentation to get people interested. Um, I think I can't show this now, but you can check later. And presenting numbers is a problem. People fall asleep with numbers. And Hans Rosling, his way of presenting numbers um, has got him uh, really, really famous. And he's been invited back to, this is TED, TED.com, uh, to do more presentations because I think this presentation is one of the most famous. His way of presenting numbers uh, was really, really interesting to people. And he was invited back, and again, he's talking about world population and uh, financial issues. And he uses boxes to represent numbers. And again, it's another interesting way to easily understand big numbers. Um, and so, uh, those were some examples. Please check online later. Um, but how can you make your presentation? And to me, there are three important elements. One is design it well, make it engaging and natural. And uh, we'll start with engaging. And that is, you need to have one main message, cut out a whole lot of extra stuff, make it simple. And so with your one main message, put it into a story format. And according to Aristotle, every story has a beginning, middle, and end. An introduction, a body, conclusion. 
And so wrapping it up like that makes it easy for people to understand. Also include interaction, have audience members talk together and talk with the audience. And do, 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 do some writing, some text is fine, but not too much. Uh, realia, do you remember realia? If you're going to talk about cups, show a cup. Um, and phones, video, if you can, make your own. Um, use pictures. There's two types of licenses. There's copyright and creative commons. With copyright, if you use photos that are under copyright, you should pay. If you don't want to pay, use Creative Commons. It's for free. And you can get Creative Commons photos at Flickr.com, Wikipedia, Pexels, and more. Um, links will be on my website. Design, how do you design and structure your um, presentation? So to me, uh, the best thing to do is start on paper and uh, if you start on paper, then it's kind of easier to understand. Oh yeah, my cup. And yeah, I, I took this photo. Uh, this is a friend who helped me a long time ago prepare for this. And um, when you plan your props, is this PowerPoint? No. What is this? It's Prezi. So there's PowerPoint, is one type of prop you can use. There's Prezi, and there's other software. You can use large sheets of paper, or you can use the whiteboard, whatever you need. Um, oh, and coming back, do it on paper. I, when I planned this presentation for the first time, I considered the view I want the people to see, and I made notes. And so later, I could cut these and then organize them into a better order. And then, when you've got them cut, you should rehearse actually try it to a live audience like your cat or your dog because you start to consider how other people will understand your presentation and as you're presenting you think oh here's a problem maybe I should move those around maybe there's something missing maybe I should add something else and so that's why you need your cat or your dog or your mirror and then once you think you've got it good practice with friends really you do need to practice you do need to test on your friends so please help each other um, and the natural part there are three parts design engaging and natural um, do you want to look like a robot So, to look human, you need to rehearse and practice and practice and rehearse and try and try. I've done this presentation so many times in four or five years that I know what's coming up next. I know what to say and I can look very relaxed. Actually, I'm a very, very shy person. Do you think I am shy? That's because I've practiced this so much and I've done teaching for so long, it's, it's I don't care anymore. It's easy for me now. So for your presentation, you should rehearse and practice a lot. So you look natural. And so recap, or like uh, in the end, um, prepare on paper, plan your props, plan your presentation on paper first, Make sure you have a story with one main message and simplify, oops, 
cut out all the extra things you don't need, focus on the important message, plan your props, whether it be PowerPoint, Prezi, large pieces of paper, whatever, and, oops, and rehearse, maybe with the video camera, review, watch how it looks on the video and think, oh, that's bad, I need to change. And then do the changes, and then again and again and again, until it looks really good. Understand? Yeah. And okay. so, uh, now, can you talk together, what did you learn from this? I'll give you three minutes. Let's go.